Hello Arnie, this is Barry Rogers, principal of Northside College Prep High School in Chicago, the number one high school in the state of Illinois. And as you know, um, Northside had pioneered the Physics First program. And it's my pleasure today to share with you a wonderful individual, Sabrina Pasterski, who is doing an incredible documentary on Physics First. Come on in. <laughs> So great. So we're very proud of uh, Sabrina and all the work that she's doing and uh, one of Illinois' finest. Thank you. All the best. Physics is so much fun that everybody should do physics. I, I just think that it's a way of looking at the world which is so uh, remarkable and so telling and so... Um, uh, makes you pay attention to things that you would ordinarily not pay attention to, which are very, very important. It almost seems like it would be too easy to just lay out a program that would improve students' physics education because um, short of just taking more time, uh, that's, that's the easy answer. The issue of women in physics is certainly something I've been very, very interested in for a lot of years. I, I became an activist for women in physics about 18 years ago when I was department chair and discovered that, uh, that our women concentrators hated it in spite of the fact that they had actually stuck it out for four years and were concentrating in physics. Um, and that really, I thought, was just unacceptable and that turned me into a, a bit of a feminist. For minorities in physics, I think we have additional layers of, of problems, which is uh, uh, not just for minorities, but for students coming from disadvantaged backgrounds. Um, it's just not an easy thing to get into if you haven't been started right. Right now in America, we have some states which only mandate two years of science, others mandate three years. Um, when you only mandate two years, um, I think there's not enough. If the goal was to have them see physics as often as possible and as many different ways as possible, then freshman year, start with concepts and build your way up until by the senior year, they have gotten to uh, see physics in, in, in different ways. The question about what stage to implement it is there are reasons why you want to teach physics in ninth grade, and that has to do with preparation for further study in biology or chemistry, the chemistry being based on, you know, chemistry using a lot of physics terms and biology using a lot of chemistry terms. I mean, the second chapter of every biology book is organic chemistry. They've never taken chemistry. If I look at a, chemist, a biology exam, they're asked about questions with pH, but they haven't studied chemistry. They're asking questions about organic molecules, but they've never studied chemistry. A lot of the concepts in chemistry especially are really physics atomic structure, for example, the uh, chemical rules about the, the periodic table. Even in the chemistry course, the instructors are introducing elements of, of physics, but without the framework, the foundations for really creating a, a whole picture uh, that makes sense. Uh, I have a son who's a sophomore in high school, and his high school does not have physics first. He had uh, biology, and he's taking chemistry now, and then he'll have physics later on. Physics First uh, might provide some of the foundational ideas about atoms, about energy, that could then be used in chemistry and biology, uh, but it would have to be at a fairly simple level if one is going to do it, let's say, in the ninth or, or tenth grades as the, as the first science subject. The other problem which emerges, like when do you teach physics, is this idea that some people have that, no, 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 to do physics, you have to know a lot of math. It's not real physics if you don't have vector cross products. And in fact, it is real physics if you don't have vector cross products in the same way that what we teach in high school or even the first year of college is real physics, even though there's not group theory or Riemannian geometry or things like that. If you introduce physics earlier, then you probably would have to do it in a different way because then it's getting ahead of the math. Uh, but that's okay if you say, I'll introduce uh, physics uh, in a conceptual way. I think there are lots of things one could do at a um, uh, qualitative and semi-quantitative level uh, that then are, are actually quite deep. One of the unifying principles uh, of my 
freshman for Hot Shots class this year was a playground swing, which is a fantastic <laughs> object. And uh, so rather than having uh, inside labs, I sent the kids out into the playground to study what happens when they actually swing on a swing. Um, that's something that you could easily do in high school, and it's actually fascinating. Uh, and uh, you begin to see the physics at a very simple level. And the farther, the deeper you get into it, the more physics there actually is there. So when people ask, when can people learn physics, I like to think of it as, well, when can people learn baseball? You know, professional baseball players have a ball coming in 90 miles an hour. Um, little League, it comes in maybe 50 miles an hour, but we don't outlaw Little League because it's not real baseball. In the same way, we shouldn't outlaw physics because students are, have limited math backgrounds. We should find a way to teach the physics concepts and help them understand and appreciate physics, and that might provide more of a rationale for them wanting to learn more math. I guess it would be a question of, uh, is, does physics not get enough time now? Should it get more time? In, school, in high school, and if so, should that time be spent differently? I think ideally, earlier and more conceptual, and following it up with uh, a later round of physics where you're using more math, um, I think that would just make for a, a much more sensible approach to physics. So I think we have to work especially hard to build the numbers of students entering physics so that it becomes more attractive and natural for others to follow. That's really the first step. I think often about um, Michael Faraday, who was a great physicist in the 19th century, arguably the best experimental physicist of the 19th century. And he introduced the field concept, he discovered electricity, he also did work in chemistry. So he was a poor boy of 13 years old in London, and he goes to work for a book binder. He drops out of school. He doesn't know math. And he does have a drive. He does want to learn. And I worry that here's somebody who was so enormously successful. Do we have anybody like that in urban America today or in schools? Because the worry is that we do, and we're going to lose them. The benefit of making physics required is we will have more people in our country scientifically literate if the course is well taught. Um, and we're a technological society. We live in a technological world. Technological statements are being made all the time in newspapers, and people are all the time not understanding what it all means, or even worse, thinking they know what it means and making statements that are totally false, totally misleading, and therefore uh, potentially very harmful to our society. Um, having people be better educated about science and having people be better educated by, in physics in particular would be a good thing because we need to have a society that, that understands what science is about. And unless we have a population who at least understands what science is, is about and who has who produce a society that produces a number of scientists and, and engineers, people in technology, who will work it in these leading edge uh, areas, we're going to fall behind in international competition and, and we will not live up to our potential as a nation. Physics training prepares you for just about anything. As I say, if we required physics for a driver's license, the, uh, the roads would be much safer. Of course, the work we've done with active physics has been based a lot on research we know about, um, including how people learn. And with, with two young kids also struggling with the question of what do I want them to see in, in high school, uh, and if hard choices had to be made, what things do I really, really think they have to see.